Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, rejoining our crew here on the moon. Uh, Engineer Laura Douglas has uh, successfully attached a pipe both uh, between our lander and this supply module, which then connects to the rest of the base, and uh, this supply drop, which had previously not been connected. And uh, before we can get started with a, a lot of our uh, rebuilding, reconstruction efforts, we got to do some resource transfery things. So uh, we'll get right onto that here very shortly, and then uh, proceed with the mission as planned. We will start off our rehab here by just uh, doing a bunch of resource transfery things, trying to empty out all the modules we will be working with, or at least uh, the two that I planned on working with uh, right off the bat, and uh, of course topping off the fuel in our ascent stage. Now we will get our uh, lone engineer, Laura, out here to actually begin work in earnest. Now that uh, the super speedy upper bits are done, this is still all going to be speddy uppy bits because the frame rate was really just that terrible. Uh, it did make the beginning stages of this uh, take way too long. But uh, first we're going to try to do some uh, reconstruction on a rehab module and I will start off by promptly detaching the exact wrong piece. Uh, I did not intend to detach that at all, but uh, we'll move along. We'll take these two antennas off the top and of course uh, scrap this tank that we no longer need and collect these four RTGs. We're going to uh, relocate them someplace else. We'll also move this uh, Agena core. It is uh, also slated for disposal. Um, yeah, and that, that tank also, which uh, gave me an idea about exactly how to dispose of things. But uh, of course it didn't quite want to cooperate, but I did in fact get an engine on there kind of facing a more or less correctish direction. Uh, had I been thinking this through, however, I, I would have taken an approach that you'll see later. But uh, because I filled that bottom tank part thing with uh, resources, it is too heavy for our lone curb to lift. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll just have her go over here and detach uh, these lunar module ascent stage engines that we used to bring the lab down to the surface. We will, of course, be disposing of them also. But uh, they can move out of the way, and we can go ahead and attach these four RTGs that we've just collected. Uh, I think this is a much more sound plan as far as how to power this thing at night because uh, it can't get knocked off a pedestal and magically disconnected. It's just uh, here. It is part of the lab. It will remain so and probably cause many fewer problems. Anyway, this is an empty crate that we brought down uh, a while ago on this resupply trip, and of course we need to take the strut piece it was attached to because it will only attach to a node. I would like to uh, maintain some crates down here on the surface just in case we need to scrap things or uh, otherwise do stuff involving crates later on. But uh, for right now, we're just going to leave it here on the ground and try to pack some things into it. Of course, uh, these engines are far too big to be placed in a crate, which basically means uh, everything that's on this... Well, there goes another landing gear. We probably didn't need that anyway, to be honest. But uh, what we need to do first is rectify the situation with this bottom tank. So we're just going to reconnect it into the network here and uh, eventually switch over to the correct thing. That would be the base and uh, empty it out into one of our supply drops that I just spent a bunch of time offloading all the things from. Um, you know, that figures. Proper planning and whatnot. I guess uh, I had planned on doing the uh, resupply module deconstruction first, but then it occurred to me that it's probably more worthwhile to do everything else first. And uh, we'll deploy those landing gear for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I guess I was trying to make it go upright by only deploying the bottom two landing gear, but of course they all deployed, which screwed up that plan. But with this tank empty, we can now lift it and attach it in the wrongiest fashion, which uh, causes a very nice hop and a slide that makes me all too nervous. But we can move it now, and that's really kind of what matters. So uh, we'll try to push these engines out of the way. I do fear that if they tip over and hit something, it might cause an explosion. But uh, we'll be back to deal with them later. Right now we are going out to our uh, lander vehicle to pick up a supply crate that has RTGs. And uh, I thought it had some concrete um, ground pylons in it. It does not. Just fair warning. 
that uh, I think the only ground pylon I brought might have been the one that we had to abandon in orbit. Although uh, I will be going back later on to double check and see if we do have another one. We will kind of need it. That engine did fall over, but it took nothing with it. So there's that. So with this crate opened up, uh, we can see it has five RTGs and like a metal plate and some other stuff, stuff that doesn't really matter. So in the time being, I'm just going to clear some space in inventory by dropping these two things off. We're going to take these uh, four thruster ports and uh, place them down by that engine bell. Maybe we can use them as ullage motors uh, in hopes of maybe being able to separate it. But since there was no ground pylon in there, I need to procure one because we're going to have to do some things that involve a ground pylon, um, notably redoing our HAB module. Uh, and making it actually uh, attached to the ground and not just sitting on these landing legs, which are prone to explosion if you breathe on them wrong. I don't know how they stood up to the rigors of landing, but it worked. Anyway, we've mounted this ground pylon to the ground, and uh, now it is time to try to scoop up this thing. We can get the bottom plate without too much trouble. It is empty after all, but we will need to empty the top plate of it. It does hold uh, various resources and whatnot, but there we go. Mounted to the ground pylon. Uh, a little bit higher uh, than I guess I would have liked, but no big deal. And next step is to go ahead and remove the engine tanks and engine bells and get them ready for disposal. But uh, first we need to get rid of these thrusters. And this is what I should have done when I was over here earlier, but of course I'm kind of a spastic child in that manner. Anyway, the plan was here to uh, use these thrusters to help ullage the engine should they need a second light after taking off or disposing of themselves. Let's go ahead and get that attached. And hey, look at that. The magical landing gear ghost has returned. It is not just a Mars thing. It is a landing gear and KIS thing. So uh, we'll attach these on the side like this. These are a radial attached node. And considering we have like three of them, were I paying attention, we could probably make that into a workable spacecraft capable of disposing of itself. But of course, I, I did not. I already removed one engine. It's sitting at the center of the the core there. And the other engines are recessed. I don't know. With enough thought and planning, I probably could have made a somewhat workable, uh, launchable thing out of that. I, I just did not. I was honestly uh, running a little short on time and having to take uh, quicker methods to accomplish a lot of things that maybe I would have done a whole lot differently otherwise. But uh, poor Laura pushing this fuel tank that's easily three times the size of her and an engine and a landing gear across the lunar surface while the ghosts of the moon try to push it to do other things. And I really hope it doesn't blow up when it hits stuff. That was honestly way bigger of a concern than it had any right to be, but the Kraken works in mysterious ways. We all know this. All right, so back again, we'll just uh, you take the jump jet shortcut here and uh, try to remove this last tank and let this have module fall to rest on the ground. That would have been a much better configuration for it, just that low, but of course, the ground pylon that would allow such mounting uh, is in orbit up there somewhere. Anyway, we'll uh, get this last tank attached to uh, what is now basically our big pile of trash. These are all parts that need to be disposed of, and the Kraken has decided that it just wants to throw it in the air. And you know, hey, what? That's fine. We'll just, you know, they're all slated for disposal anyway. I guess uh, the interesting part was that it almost landed right side up. It somehow magically rolled itself that way. And in Kraken attack number two for the day, those three lunar uh, ascent engines just randomly self-destructed. And I think they took a landing gear with them, which is probably the, the impetus of said explosion. Don't remember if that was one that we uh, accidentally blew up before, but it certainly worked. It certainly blew up this time. So we'll just uh, position ourselves, of course, within range of the crate and our mounting destination for all of these RTGs and get them uh, welded, drilled, mounted somehow. 
and of course uh, mount a port because we will in fact need to hook this thing up uh, so that it can share resources with the rest of the installation. There we go. And then run another line over here to the top section where we will mount a port also so that we can empty it and make it able to be uh, carried by a single Kerbal. Now, with this base plate having been mounted, once we figure out the right thing, we can just uh, dump all of said resources into there. Of course, uh, if we open up a few other things for us to uh, empty it into, it'll go a whole lot faster. So we'll just do that. And this transfer does take uh, quite a bit of time. There's actually a lot of stuff there. A lot of food, water, and oxygen for uh, use there in the hab. All right. Now that it's emptied, we'll toggle through all 10 th million things that we have here and start to move this habitation uh, top plate onto its bottom plate mount. Almost. Come on. There you go. And it is mounted into place. Much better. And a, uh, a bunch fewer parts, which is absolutely fantastic. And uh, we do have more... Uh, port mounts down there, so we can use that as a mounting place. So, uh, I think we can safely uh, go ahead and mount this empty crate now. It's pretty much out of the way. We just uh, don't need it being rendered as a separate vessel anymore, so we'll get it attached there. That leaves it uh, well within grasping range of the nearest Kerbal, who is unfortunate enough to have to come out here and do some work with it. And uh, here is my quick planning stage, and I guess the next thing to do is to start clearing off the uh, other side of the station. That I think will maybe even out our landing leg distribution. It actually shouldn't matter so much because that uh, pipe is rigid. And since the uh, HAB module is bolted to the ground and has that rigid pipe coming from it, we really shouldn't see any motion unless we disconnect that pipe. I, however, am absolutely not going to... Uh, Try to validate that theory through any methodology whatsoever. So uh, we've got these engines off and to keep them from exploding, we're just going to mount them very haphazardly uh, onto our garbage pile and then uh, move the lone RTG that was already mounted here into its uh, final position. And of course, relocate the landing gear so we can at least have some sense of uniformity here. We started with six landing legs. Now we're down to four. That's... Um, an interesting omen. We've had two crew deployments. We've lost two landing gear. All right, and now it's time to start scrapping some parts from the outside of the laboratory proper. We're going to move the sciency bits uh, and keep them, but we probably don't need that Agena core. We can just let that fall to the ground, nor the tank that was mounted. To Whoa! It uh, touched a landing leg, apparently, and was kicked off into the distance for self-disposal. It did explode in the background. We'll relocate the short-range comms antenna, remove the tank, remove the Agena core, and uh, let them fall to the ground, where we will mount them together and then uh, move them over to our garbage pile for destruction at a later date. Now, at this point, I had not actually planned what I was going to do with this compiled mass of just ridiculousness. Uh, it is just a big pile of parts and trying to make something sensible out of it or even something that would take off um, was starting to seem a little beyond the pale. Yeah, we should probably collect this one last tank before it touches a landing gear and explodifies something. Uh, really, I'd prefer just not to lose any more landing leg bits because then we might have to mount the lab on a ground pylon and that just doesn't seem like it would be okay. Anyway, we'll collect our one random core from this pylon from where we had the power couple mounted before and relocate it after a quick tumble in the dust. You know, no good spacesuit is without its bruises. There's that one. And now it's time to go collect the second crate from... Uh, I guess first we're going to collect an empty one from here just to... Uh, balance out the load on this thing. We would like to keep two crates, but that does, of course, mean we have to take the little landing strut with us. And uh, since we're going to be disposing of this, I thought it might be a good idea to maybe collect these solar panels. If we can charge our batteries a little bit more effectively, but uh, first we will mount them a little lower 
so that we can get at them from the ground, or we'll just drop them and, oh, that one shattered. That's a bad sign. And each one of these is too big to fit in a crate, which is a little mind-boggling. But we'll try to stow them. Goodbye landing leg. Detach them, they all shatter. That was a uh, complete and total waste of time. And I've just created more junk here on the surface for absolutely no reason whatsoever. That's... it's a good time. <laughs> Try to remove parts, ends up creating more junk parts. So we'll get this empty crate over here to the habitation module and get it mounted. Clear and solid, and within easy reach of whatever Kerbal happens upon it, we will pick up the uh, leftover crate from the uh, ascent stage. It still has a couple of parts in it. I think just a metal plate, maybe some ports. Uh, nothing of any real consequence, but we'll go ahead and mount it back on our ascent stage. Maybe we'll end up taking these crates back to Earth with us. Uh, you know, it's not a lot of a refund amount, but uh, oh yeah, there's nothing in this crate. I guess we emptied it. Okay, well now there's some antennas in it. While we're here, we might as well extend this ladder just to make sure that we can get back in later. Carefully back ourselves out away from the uh, lander. Careful not to touch any landing legs. Those things are just creepy. And uh, waddle our happy selves right over here to the lab where we will be installing its uh, complement of RTGs. There we go. And very gently use our cordless drill to mount them in place. And we'll have to do a rundown test to see uh, how effective this count of RTGs will be. I think we had 15 on the power couple before, plus two on the station, plus four on the hab. And we were generating, we were keeping the batteries topped off completely no matter what. So this is a lower count of total RTGs, although less likely to cause problems thanks to KIS. We'll uh, waddle ourselves close-ish to the lander to uh, reinstall this mostly empty crate. There we go. I hope the weight disparity isn't too bad, but uh, we'll have to see. Anyway, she's going to uh, retreat to the safe haven of uh, the installation itself, where actually this looks a whole lot better and it's running a whole lot smoother too. So very first thing we need to do right now is retract these solar panels and then choose our method of disposal. Completely safe, I assure you. Anyway, there's way more to do here, but I'm completely out of time. So that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.